Riptide for Alligator. Here we go again. The beast that dominated the Rocket on format is back. That Riptide attack can do insane amounts of damage for only three water energy, and it's supposed to be balanced by the fact that all of your water energy gets shuffled back into your deck, meaning that you should have to start your setup for Riptide over completely every time you use it, but that's not the case now, is it? For Alligator's own downpour Pokemon power is a big help in getting those water energy into the discard, meaning that you can power up Riptide faster. In the Rocket On format, you could have used Trash Exchange and Misty's Wrath to make sure that your discard pile was always full of water energy. Because there were no checks or counters for this trainer abuse, a lot of decks had to result to running copies of Giovanni's Nidoran as a tech to try to like, KO Totodiles before they could evolve. As Trash Exchange and Misty's Wrath were rotated out and the Neo On format began, people pretty much dropped Riptide as an archetype. For a while, at least. As with Neo Revelation came a Parasect that with its allergic pollen Pokemon power could keep all of those water energy in the discard no matter how many times you used Riptide. And then later in the second half of the Neo on format you got Juggler which was essentially another Misty's Wrath that Riptide decks could utilize. Juggler would allow you to discard two water energy straight from your hand right into the discard which is good by itself but it would then allow you to draw a bunch of cards to add to your hand, probably a lot of water energy in there, which you could then use for Alligator's power to discard. So with these new tools, it doesn't take much imagination to figure out why this deck came back with such a vengeance, but was the Neo on Riptide deck better than the Rocket on one? Well, we'll talk about that. Let's get into the build. Cleffa is optional in this deck as because of Copycat, you don't really need to refresh your hand all that much. Copycat gives you enough power to, but without Cleffa in this deck, you only have six basic Pokemon. And so because of Mulligans, that can make it a little rough. So having the three Cleffa in this deck is actually a little bit of a reprieve from having to Mulligan. And you can go ahead and get those Eeks off to give yourself some setup advantage. Your opponent can take advantage of that as well if they have Copycat, but that's really just the risk that you run. Cleffa does have free retreat, so if you know your opponent probably has Copycat and you don't want to eek, you can just pull it off the bench and replace it with a Totodile, which will be running a full playset of. This is the Neo Genesis 50 HP Totodile. If you want to use one of the other ones that has 40 HP, if you prefer to have those attacks as early game attacks, then go for it. I just mainly prefer for pre-evolution cards that they just have as much HP as possible because they're really there just to evolve up into Croconaw, which we're also running a full playset of. Again, this is the one with 80 HP instead of 70 HP. It's really just there to evolve up into Feraligatr. And you absolutely can use Pokemon Breeder, but because the format does slow down, and evolution decks did have that room to set up. I've found that it's better to just evolve into Croconaw and then for Alligator, taking your time with the setup. You definitely can benefit from the speed that Pokemon Breeder would allow, but only late game because Riptide costs three energy, so you're looking at a turn three attack anyway, so you might as well take your time evolving up into Feraligatr. That way you can attack for one energy with Totodile, two energy with Croconaw, and then three energy with Feraligatr, and continue your setup from there. Just rip off some Riptides until Feraligatr's knocked out. Instead of speed evolving into Feraligatr on turn two and then not being able to attack. So running a 2-2 line of that Parasect, there are other Paris cards you can use. I just went with this one because it's from the same set. I don't see too much of a difference in Paris cards. You won't be using them to attack anyway. I have seen some kind of rogue versions of Riptide that run rainbow energy in them. That way Parasect could actually attack and be a really good tech for mirror matches. But that really messes with the build. You, you really want to go full complete water energy when you're running Riptide if you want to get off maximum damage on those attacks. If you start including grass energy and rainbow energy, you really have to plan out exactly how much damage you're wanting to do with Riptide and do just enough to get that amount of energy into your discard without wasting those other types of energy. Full playset of Juggler because it is going to be your cornerstone trainer card in this deck. 
it's going to get you the fastest setup it's going to get the most water energy in the discard so by turn three when you're ready to start unleashing riptides you want to have played at least one juggler card early game you're going to be using a lot more cards like copycat which again we see a full playset here so that when your opponent is using Cleffa's eek you can benefit from that by just playing a copycat or anytime that your opponent has a hand advantage over you copycat can be a lifesaver next we will have a full playset of professor elm this is going to be your next best option for getting water energy in the discard but the professor elms are more for after your for alligators already set up that way you can refresh your hand get a bunch of fresh water energy in there and then use downpour to go ahead and discard those into your discard I almost said graveyard there. I don't even know what trading card game I'm playing anymore. Even though there's only two evolution lines in this deck, you can run into these weird situations where you'll get an opening hand that has a totodile and like three for alligators in it. And so for that reason, Pokemon Trader can be helpful. That way you can just trade one of those gators for a Croconaw. That way you got the full evolution line or you'll get an opening hand that's just a Cleffa and a Parasect or something like that. Pokemon Trader can be really helpful. It's not essential to the deck since you do have Clef Up and Copycat and Professor Elm to help you with any hand refreshes you need. So in a lot of cases, I would say drop the traders for something like Double Gust since this deck isn't really running any way to pull out specific targets. But when you're dealing as much damage as Riptide does, it doesn't really matter what your opponent's active is. You should be able to Oko nearly anything in this format once those Riptides are fired up. Because for Alligator has a horrible retreat cost and Parasect can sometimes get stranded as an active, Balloonberry is going to be really important, especially since, like I said, there's no Double Gust in this deck. Goldberry is a fantastic card to just slap onto a for Alligator, and then you don't really have to worry about it for a couple turns. You can get off at least two Riptides. There's not a lot of Pokemon that are going to be able to Oko it in Neo on, aside from a Meganium or an Exeggutor, but those are mainly played together. Town Volunteer is basically the brand new nightly garbage run, except better in support form. And so that's going to be your go-to way to get back Croconaws, for Alligators, Parasects, whatever it is that you need. You can get those out of your discard. You're not going to be using it on the energy, of course, because you want as many energy in the discard as possible. You want them to stay there. But sometimes you may run into the case where you have so many water energy in the discard that you can't power up a second for alligator fast enough because Riptide needs three energy and with 18 energy in the deck the most you can have in the discard is 15 and so that's great you're dealing 160 damage off of that attack but when that for alligator gets knocked out you don't have enough energy to power up your next one and so the only way you're going to have to get that back is with Town Volunteers. And so while it is mainly for getting those evolution cards back, you may also need it to get some of those energy cards back. But for the most part, my experience in using this deck is that once Riptide is set up on turn three, you're pretty much going to sweep the match or you're going to lose very quickly because it can be really difficult to pivot after you have lost one for Alligator. So that's the point of no return pretty much for this deck. I've already mentioned that Double Gust can be a great addition to this deck, especially since you can basically swap them out with those Pokemon Traders if you feel like you don't need the Traders. And this is just going to be a way to more selectively target your opponent's Pokemon, get those really quick knockouts, because like I said, with Riptide, you want to get those knockouts as fast as possible. Go ahead and clear out Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field as fast as you can. Because once your first for alligators knocked out, then the rest of the match gets a lot more difficult. Another way to accomplish this would be to replace one of your Riptide for alligators with the Expedition for alligator, which basically gives you a double gust for free off of this for alligators Pokemon power. This can also catch your opponent off guard pretty easy because of the four for alligators in the Neo on format, this is definitely the least used one. And so it's not really an expected addition. Seeing this thing hit the field can actually make your opponent have to reconsider which for alligator they want to target first because Major Tsunami may be more of a threat than Riptide, depending on the type of deck being used. And you may have noticed that there's no stadium card included in this deck. I don't really feel like there's a stadium that adds anything to this deck enough to justify its inclusion when all of these other cards are so important and essential to getting off 
Riptides as fast and as powerfully as possible. The only real reason I would suggest adding the stadium is if you're having a lot of problems from the stadiums that your opponent's playing. If they're getting too much of an advantage from their stadiums and you don't have any counter stadiums to knock them out of play, that would be the only reason. And then it's basically up to you, whichever stadium you like best. I hope you've enjoyed the very first deck upload of Neo On. It feels good to finally get here. And this isn't the last time you will see Feraligator in this format. Just like Base Neo got a Charizard week, it's Gator week, y'all! So stay tuned for more Feraligator decks, and stay tuned to the channel in general for more vintage Pokemon TCG content. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye.